Good morning. How are you this morning? Good. Now, some of those songs, those first couple of songs, were all about the way that Jesus calls us. So he does some things in our lives that are pretty unexpected sometimes. And our Bible story today is about that as well. So our Bible story is about Jesus calling Philip to follow him. So let's just have a, I'll just have a quick read of a little bit. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. And, and Philip did. He just followed Jesus. And that's what we do when we're Christians. And sometimes it takes us to places in our lives that are a little bit unexpected. Now, today we're saying farewell to Father Michael over here. Now, Father Michael, I'm pretty sure, has gone to some places in his life that if we had said to him when he was a young man, you're going to end up here, he would have laughed. Am I right? Yes. So I happen to know that Father Michael grew up in Dunedin, which is very cold. It's in New Zealand. It's towards the bottom of the South Island. And in the winter time, the average temperature is 10 degrees. And in the summertime, the average temperature is 21 degrees. Now, Father Michael ended up in the Tiwi Islands up off Darwin where the average winter temperature is 28 degrees and the average summer temperature is 32. Bit different from Dunedin, hey? Yeah, very different from Dunedin. Do you think we should ask Father Michael about the call that he followed? I think we could do that. Would you like to join us? Sure. Now, this is a bit unfair, everybody, because I have not shown Father Michael my questions. Oh. Are you turned on? Oh, yes, uh, on. Yes, good, that's good. Yes. It's always important to be turned on when you're sitting up the front. All right. First question, and this one's a little bit rude. How long have you been a priest? 62 years. Do you know what? Father Michael's been a priest as long as Father Steve's been alive. That's a fairly long time, isn't it? <laughs> and another question then, how long have you followed Jesus? Uh, as long as I can remember, I would think, I can't think of following anyone else, and I, from infancy. From infancy, from when he was a little child, and I think he's a little bit older than 62 years old as well. Okay, so this one's a bit trickier. Mm -hmm. When did you hear Jesus call you to be a priest? What was that like? Oh, that's, that's a, a bit, really hard one. That's a little bit harder because I, I had a sense of, I thought God was, I wasn't sure what he was saying. I thought I, and I had it all tied up with, am I to be a lawyer or a farmer or a priest? I just, somehow they came, and I was only eight or nine. Um, Did you hear that? So Jesus put the, his call on Father Michael's life when he was about eight or nine years old. So that's younger than you, Ben. And it's younger than you, Indy, isn't it? Yeah. So already God's got a call on your life and he's already planning what's going to happen in your life. So that's pretty amazing. And where did he send you? Give me some of the places he sent you yes. in your life. Okay. Well, when I left, um, first of all, he sent me to a monastery. A monastery is where lots for, of priests and monks live. All right. For, so I did my training with the, was called the Society of the Sacred Mission, uh, five years, and that was on Mount Lofty in, outside of Adelaide. Still a bit warmer than Dunedin. So, yes, <laughs> very much so. And I had a strong sense that uh, God was calling me in that, to try, test my vocation to that kind of life. And while I was there, I was training for the priesthood at the same time. Lovely. Mm. And so what about some of the places that you ministered in? Okay, well, I went first to, I went to the missionary board who desperately wanted someone to go to work with Aborigines in North Australia. And there were about 30 colleagues and no one seemed to want to go. And when they said, Michael, uh, where do you want to go? I said, I'd like to go to Japan. And uh, 
the lovely man who was chairman of the board of missions said, oh, you need very uh, subtle mind to, and I thought, oh, does that mean that's not for me? <laughs> um, they said, but no, where do you want to go? And I said, I'm prepared to go anywhere you send me. So, woof. Uh, they said, well, no, no hesitation. We'd like you to go to uh, North Queensland to an Aboriginal community. In and Cape, did you Cape pretty York. much stay up there for the rest of your ministry then? Um, I stayed on Cape York and Torres Strait for 23 years. Um, I lived in two different Aboriginal communities, Pomparao and Karanyama, and then I had 10 years in the Torres Strait. You know, guys, I made a mistake because I've been watching this great movie called Top End Wedding, and so I said Tiwi Islands, but actually it was Torres Strait, so I do apologise for that. That's okay. It was a great movie, though. Yes, yeah, lovely. <laughs> it is. Yes, that's okay. Yeah. So it was the Torres Strait. Torres Strait, yes. But similar climate. Oh, very, very similar, mm. yeah. yeah. And so, were there some challenging things in your ministry? Uh, for sure. Um, one was living in a community where uh, a lot of people were uh, not yet able to read and write. So communication was in a, uh, by voice and so on was a, another um, challenge. Um, How many languages did you have to learn? I actually, I didn't have to learn any uh, as such, I, but I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And the village I went to, Kauniyama, there were five languages, and I thought, I can't learn five. I'd be lucky if I can learn one. And every time I made a start, they said, no, Father, we want to learn better English. We don't want you to worry about. And I gave in to that, so for five years, uh, I accepted that, but then I went to the next village. I made up my mind before I arrived, that before I set my feet on the beach, because I arrived on a beach, that I would start learning the language mm -hmm. straight away. Yeah, that's really and one of the hardest words was mumpur, which was N-G-U-M-P-U-R-R, -R, uh, and it means old lady. And I was still a young man with a young wife, and I began to call her mumpur. <laughs> And, and I did till the day she died. No, Steve. <laughs> so you had some challenges, but what about some joys? You had some joys in your ministry too. Oh, um, joys all, all the way along. Um, just the joy of of people opening up their lives to and celebrating Jesus. That was the biggest of all joys. Um, but lots of other joys. Uh, it was hard time, but these were basically poor people. Well, certainly people in Pampara were uh, quite poor. They lived in uh, Koenama. They lived in grass, grass or palm leaf houses and in I went in 60 and 64, the big cyclone that blew them all to smithereens, so in, in the middle of the wet season. And uh, the army came and dropped some tents, which were so rotten I could put my little finger in the seam and run it down and they'd all fall apart. So that was a challenge, uh, housing people and caring for them uh, in, in a, a difficult situation. Um, I guess, the, and it was very remote. It used to take 24 hours to drive to town. You can do it now in 10, but in those days, uh, almost always, if you were heading to Cairns, you'd leave at five o'clock in the afternoon and hope to be there by five o'clock the next day. Wow. So uh, it was a 24 hour journey. Does it take you 24 hours to go to town, Indy? No. So this village that Father Michael lived in took 24 hours for the people to get to town. That's a long way to go. You don't want to forget the milk, do you? No, you don't. You don't. So, Father Michael, thank you. I thank just you. wanted to give the children and everybody else here a bit of a glimpse into some of the wonderful things that happen yes. when you give Jesus control sure. and you say to him, yes, I will answer your call. Can I share a little Absolutely. thing to the side? And that is that I, I, my mother was a very devout, very solidly committed Christian lady. My dad was a firm believer, but kept it all to himself. 
Uh, so I owe, owe the journey in large part to my mother being the initiator of it. And I, my first retirement was at the age of five and a half. I was boat boy in St. Peter's Cathedral in New Zealand where I carried the little boat of incense. So I've always been a bit uh, keen about holy smoke. But um, <laughs> I, I carried, and I, the family moved. So my first retirement, and I've been told locally by local ministers, I'm someone who's retired at least 18 times. I'm not sure if that's the right number, but. It sounds pretty impressive. It sounds pretty impressive. So kids, what I wanted to say to you is that, listen to that voice of Jesus on your life. You're gonna do some amazing things in your lives. You're only at the very beginning. And if you follow him, he's gonna take you to some amazing places. You're going to meet some incredible people and you're going to do some wonderful things. Yes. So you listen for that voice of Jesus on your life. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus, we thank you that you call us. All of us are your people. You've called us all and we follow you. And we thank you, Lord, for those wonderful men of God that you put in our lives that we can see shining your love through them to us. We thank you, Lord, for these role models such as Father Michael. We thank you for your call on his life. We thank you, Lord, that he answered that call and that he has lived an amazing life. He has had an incredible priesthood and he, there are still many more people whose lives he will touch when he moves away from us. Oh, Father, thank you for everything. Amen.